What's up guys, welcome back to another episode and welcome to Las Vegas, Nevada. I am here at SEMA. As you can hear, the Hoonigans are absolutely sending it behind me and I wanted to take this opportunity to show you my new truck build. Here it is, what do you think? <laughs> I wish. I am getting some amazing ideas for things that I want to do with my truck though. This is going to be a crazy three days. The show is massive. The last time I was here, I did 30,000 steps a day and I didn't even get the full show done in a week. I have Diesel with me as well. So he is here for the ride and we are going to have a blast. So sit back, grab yourself a little beer or a cocktail or a cup of tea, whatever you want. And let's do SEMA 2023. This is but I want it so bad also do you hear these guys like I don't know what that is but they are trying their hardest to kill it and they will uh, next overlanding setup do you remember a few episodes ago I said that I was gonna buy a 911 GT3 and sell everything that I owned well this is basically what that setup would look like imagine GT3 with a roof tent that's basically how I'd be rolling So this hurricane might just be the wildest thing I've ever seen. So first of all, plexiglass fenders, never seen that before. Second of all, a turbo that could swallow a child and it's pink. Look how awesome this thing is. This is the problem. There are so many sick cars that show up at SEMA that it's hard to keep track of what everything is. But this right now, and I've only been here for two hours. This is my favorite car of the show so far. <laughs> so crazy i love it i love it have you guys ever been in a drift car with a professional drift driver on a demo course no me neither that's about to change turbo diesels and back in the day I used to run an online magazine called no smoke no poke and we actually met in Wales they have the craziest diesel Mercedes I mean you must be on what your third car since I saw you Same really yeah. yeah it's nuts I mean you think these guys are crazy with the amount of tire smoke they can produce well imagine that with a diesel exhaust coming up as well I'm gonna put in some clips so you guys can see what it's like You never know who you're gonna bump into. Look who I found. 
This is nice, huh? Hi. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Good, how are you? Oh. Is this bird? Hello. Anna Glennon, everybody, who oh. you may remember from my learning to ride a stand-up jet ski yes. episode. We're still friends even after that. We are, we are. <laughs> As I got more seat time, stand time, it definitely started to feel a little bit more comfortable, but every now and again the ski would remind me that I definitely didn't have the skills to pay the bills, and it would spit me off for a swim. So Anna actually works for Khan Media, and Khan Media represent SEMA Show. So everything that I've been doing recently, so for example the Overland Summit, because of her, and Khan Media, the drift drive just then, her fault. Yeah, I honestly nearly broke. <laughs> Terrifying. Anyway, we're gonna catch up and I'll see you guys in a minute. So if you want to survive a zombie apocalypse in style This is how you do it. It's gonna cost you 1.1 million dollars But you buy the Earthroamer SX and this thing is an absolute weapon So it's based on a Ford F550 and it has been completely transformed into the most luxurious overlander you can possibly imagine I'm gonna see if they'll let me go and take a look, but this is the first time I've seen one in person, and oh my goodness, it is insane. So we have full stand-up shower, nice little sink there, toilet, look at the fit and finish on everything, it's all just gorgeous. Full dinette, obviously that turns into a bed back there, fridge freezer, storage, like what's this? So this has to be, I don't know, probably seven feet, seven and a half feet. And then the master bedroom up here, gorgeous lighting, TV, oh my goodness. And then pass through into your cab there as well. Oh my God, I want one. All right, does anybody have a spare $1.1 $1 .1 million they can give me? Because I like this. So I bought monorail tickets thinking that it'd be the smart way to get around rather than Ubering and spending tons of money and waiting in lines. I just went to get the monorail from the exhibition center and there was about 4,000 people in line. <laughs> like no joke. It has been a day already, but it's been brilliant. I'll be back probably from the hotel room with a nice cold, cold bottle of water beer. Check this out. FIA circuit equipment. So these barriers and all of this that you can see up here, this is all being built for the Formula One. So when they come and do the race, these are gonna be all the barriers, so they're all FIA certified. Oh, hey guys, uh, what's up? Come on in, welcome to my uh, humble abode. This is our hotel. Look at how nice this is. This was a last minute booking. Never stayed here before. This is the, uh, I don't know, something condo resorts, but look, separate toilet, nice. Tote vision, little TV, so that I can, watch TV while I'm shaving or whatever. I mean, I don't shave, but spa tub. Obviously never gonna use that because why would I wanna be blasted with somebody else's dead skin? So, wet bar, nice bed, closet space, kitchen, toaster, TV, like everything I would need that I didn't realize was in here, down to a blender, pull out couch, sofa bed thing, living room for diesel, and then, check this out. <laughs> oh. You ready for your feet to feel weird? Yeah. So I have never had a balcony in Las Vegas, and this wasn't even that expensive. I like this, this is awesome. Now, I'm a little bit further south uh, than I usually am. Normally I stay on the strip, sort of around like Planet Hollywood, just the other side of uh, this Hilton here. However, one of my favorite restaurants in all of Las Vegas is, you can almost see it. If this building wasn't in the way, you'd see it just the other side. It's called Nacho Daddy and it's amazing. What do you think? Is this nice? Yeah. Yeah, you having fun? You enjoying SEMA? Today was a lot of fun, uh, but obviously there was a lot. Oh, that's still, oh, that feels good on my back. There was a lot to still do. So we did about 25% of outside and I did some of the West Hall, but my plan is tomorrow, start there, go back in, get that finished and then start to work our way down. So I think I'm gonna meet up with some of the guys from Khan Media, gonna go get some drinks and some dinner. But first I have to shower because I feel gross. So I'll see you guys in a bit. Good morning.
morning, Vegas. Good morning, Diesel. So it is day two here at, oh, there you go, Diesel's having a pee. So it is day two here at SEMA. Went out last night after the show, had a couple of beers, met up with Anna and Ali from Car Media slash Tread Agency. Cheers. One knee. <laughs> oh, Chante. And at Anna's request, we went to a place that does cake shakes. They are milkshakes with a whole slice of cake on top. Only in Vegas, right? First up on my agenda, though, is to go and get some breakfast from one of my favorite places here in Las Vegas a Mexican place called Nacho Daddy. There we go, so yesterday, 25,700 steps. Definitely not my PB. I was doing 30,000 a couple of years ago here at SEMA, but you can see how much more than my regular days that is. <laughs> Especially Sunday, I was very hungover on Sunday. Well, this is what I call a Vegas breakfast. Not gonna lie, this is also usually my weekend breakfast as well. So for those of you going, what on earth is that? This is a michelada. Some of you will know, so in that case, I don't have to explain how delicious they are, but for those of you who don't, this is basically a, thank you. This is basically a beer version of a Bloody Mary, Mexican beer specifically. And then you do a tahini rim, which is kind of spicy. Well, tangy. Just a little queso appetizer. Wow, that is nuclear hot. Okay, I'm uh, maybe gonna let that cool a bit. Although, this candle probably doesn't help. Are you like napalm? Not too bad, but oh, so good. How's this for a little brekkie feast? A little quesadilla, I'm gonna dip, that. I am a happy boy right now. So far today, two and a half miles walked, and I haven't even got into the show yet. <laughs> So I just had a really good meeting with Tough Stuff Overland and in my quest for figuring out exactly what I want to do with the Ram version 2, this is sort of where I'm at. Obviously not the rooftop tent because I already have my, uh, my little camper shell thing going on. Is that nice? Is that nice? <laughs> don't bite it. Don't bite it. You can roll, but don't bite it. <laughs> <laughs> come here, come here, you're crazy. You're crazy boy, you're crazy boy. <laughs> come here. <laughs> Sit, lie down, boy. As I was saying, this is kind of what I'm looking at. So I really love the rack and the idea that I have would be to put the rack all the way across onto my camper shell. And then they have these two 70 degree awnings, which are amazing. And so if I did have a rack up there, it would give me the opportunity to install something like this or this very shade itself. So when I'm cooking here, I could have plenty of shade and then I could have my table set up, chairs, whatever. And it just gives you so much coverage for what is a relatively small footprint. So this right here, is what it folds into. I'm not gonna lie, I also really like these side panels. Now, I obviously have windows on my camper, and realistically, like I tell you guys, I don't spend that much time actually in the camper itself. I'm sleeping or I'm out. So the fact that I wouldn't be able to see out as well, doesn't really bother me, but it would allow me to mount additional stuff to the side. Stuff like a shower maybe, or a pop-out shower tent stuff. I, I don't know, this is the problem is, that once I start going down the rabbit hole, I want everything and I need to sort of curb my enthusiasm just a little bit and pick something that's going to work because at the end of the day it is still my daily truck so I don't want to go full overland but they do look badass. I also had a really good conversation with Pelican about their new cases that they have that they put up on top here. Oh and in fact this mount that you can see that is actually a quick release mount so that you can take those Pelican cases on and off. So that would be super handy because I could put recovery gear up there and basically get stuff out of the bed of the truck that's in there currently that I don't use very often and put it up on the roof and then padlock it up there. 
Hmm, ideas. Okay, next thing we need to find out, we need to find a rack company that does one for not only my truck, but also for the camper shell. And then we need to go and look at some lights because that is something that I am massively in need of. So then if you guys aren't in the market for something that permanently turns the bed of your truck into a sleeping arrangement, this one I believe they say is a two-man tent. I mean, it's gonna be tight, but You've got all of this coverage. You've got your little vestibule here so that it's not gonna get wet in the mornings. And this thing just pops out from that little clamshell right there. So it's a really cool option for if you want something that is more subtle, still gives you the use of the bed of the truck, but also gives you the ability to camp wherever you want. So they actually have this monster version right here. So this is actually a five man tent. This thing is huge inside. So just one massive mattress. So they say five people, you basically do four this way and then one person gets to smell everybody's feet. But realistically, for a family or just for a couple that wants to be super cozy, maybe you've got a dog as well, this would be absolutely ideal. <laughs> I am obviously not a rooftop tent camper, but if I was, I think I'd have something like that. Now I'm not a Ford guy, but dude, look at this. So on, I believe these are 43s. I think these are the same size tires that they have on the, uh, the Earth Roamers. That looks incredible. See, this is the problem with SEMA. I'm talking about doing a three inch lift and fitting 37 inch tires next. And then I look at something like this and I go, well, could I make 43s fit? I said I wasn't a Ford guy, but apparently I don't need to be. So who is this? Liquid spring smart suspension. So this would have been a dual axle rear, but look how good it looks. So obviously they've had to trim massive amounts out of this side fender to make these things fit. Custom front bumper. Oh my God, this is the brand new one too, because they've got the, uh, the slightly different side mirrors to mine. So what I always find crazy is this is actually just the crew cab. So I have the mega cab. This is the long bed. So this has an eight foot box on it, whereas mine has the six and a half foot. But my truck is the same length as this, but this thing just looks absolutely massive in comparison. The long bed really does make everything look so much bigger. Yet, somehow, this is the same size as my truck. So I think what it is that I love so much about these trucks is that when you replace the dual rear axle with a single, you still have the flared bed. And so you get this like, almost kind of a pre-runner trophy truck style width to it but with that big old single tire, and it just looks so tough. Love the videos. Oh, thank you, dude. Yeah, Pre man. Appreciate yeah. it. Yeah, love them. Thank you very you much. I like stumbled upon you on uh -huh. YouTube, started watching them, I can't get enough. Like, you <laughs> cruising awesome. on the jet ski, you, like you know? Oh stuff? my gosh, I love it. Love cool, I stuff, appreciate man. it. Thank yeah. you for watching. Thank you. Appreciate yeah. you saying hi. Yeah. Item number 457 that I didn't think I needed, but now might. This thing actually looks really good. So. AEV does these custom bumpers. Now, I don't know if you have to have the bull bar on it as well, because I think that might be a bit much, but also... So this is something I've never seen before. So this conversion van has a wind turbine, which honestly makes a lot of sense, right? I don't know if you can deploy it while you're driving or if it's just something that can be up when you're parked up, but anything you can get, right? Solar, wind, and the other cool thing, got an RCR on there. Oh yeah, that is my kind of camping. So I think I've figured out my solution for the lack of light that I have on the Ram. And if you watched my last video, then you'll know that I went up into the mountains up above Joshua Tree National Park. And I was doing some driving at night and the stock headlights just don't cut it. Well, a few weeks previously, I went to the Overland Summit up in uh, Big Bear and I met with the guys from Rigid Lights and I got to go out in one of their trucks, their pre-runners that had all of their cool stuff on it. And they were unbelievably bright and it just made such a difference. Difference. But I wasn't sure if I wanted to go with the whole light bar thing at the time. I was still thinking that I wanted to keep the truck stealthy. But now that I've been around the show, of course I want to go bigger and better and more gnarly and yeah, all of the above. So I've come back to the rigid stand to check out some of that stuff. Let's see if I push this button. Like, it's so bright. Oh, wait, wait, what? Party mode? Oh, that was party mode? Okay, so the green is party mode. Here's something else that I thought. These would fit absolutely perfectly on the Cedars. 
they are exactly the right size. They have this amber running light, but then you also have the super bright white light as well. I wonder if they do that with a super bright amber, or if I could put like a, a cover over it so I could run the amber super bright. Because if I can, that would be an awesome thing to replace the lights that I currently have on the CD, which they're great, but they're more of a proof of concept. And they certainly aren't lights that were developed to go on side-by-sides and things and actually light up big areas. So that's definitely cool. So I could have rigid lights on the truck and on the sea -Doo. Hmm, interesting. Well, that was indeed a very, very productive day. Don't eat the grass diesel, please, thank you. Do you mind? We'll go get you some food, you're not a cow. I feel like I got a lot of progress on figuring things out for the truck, which is good for me and for you guys, because I mean that I'll be able to do even gnarlier stuff. And I am so ready for a beer right now you would not believe. Well, this isn't something that you see in Valet every day. Steve Darnell's diesel power rat rod. That is one of my favorite cars ever, the welder up rat rod. I believe it runs a Cummins turbo diesel engine. It's just so badass. They build such awesome stuff. I met Steve a few years ago, super cool guy. And uh, yeah, I would love to go in one of those things. <laughs> Oh, we made it. Oh, actually, before we go out there, one thing I'm forgetting. So I do have a fridge in this room, but for some reason it just freezes everything. So, oh wait, oh, it hasn't. Perfect. So I know in the last few videos I've been doing kind of a no booze thing. I still plan on going back to that, but you know, Vegas. Look at that sunset. Oh, perfect. Well, we are more than halfway through this trip. Cheers. Ah, bloody love Seema. Seema, I'm saying Seema, like S-E-M-A, for anybody comments. Is it nice to be back in the room? <laughs> it's big days, isn't it? It's a lot of walking around and a lot of meeting people. Yeah. Have a little snooze. And I'm watching Too Fast and Furious because what else would I be doing at Seema? Man, this is cold. SEMA day three. I feel like Tuesday and yesterday were definitely spent mostly taking care of business, talking with different brands about the truck build and kind of getting ideas. Today, we're gonna to see how much of the show we can actually do. I've got to do all of the South Hall. I've got to do all of the North Hall. West Hall is pretty much finished. So we're gonna cruise around and I'll show you some of my favorite things that I find. Team Associated RC10 remote control car, and they now have a full-size one. Imagine how much fun this would be. <laughs> this is so sick. Look, we've even got the knobby tires on it. Oh my God, that thing is so badass. So shout out to these guys. This seat, not this one, but one of these seats saved my life. When I um, put my Mercedes on its side, I was in an NRG bucket seat with their harnesses, and I didn't have a scratch. 
car, on the other hand, was, uh, yeah, it was the very first video I ever put on my YouTube channel. That's how I started it. Um, but yeah, so if you guys are in the market, obviously, I know I have status seats in my Golf. That's because ever since I was a kid, I've always wanted them. But if you're in the market for some more affordable seats, NRG make amazing products. So last night I was in the hotel and uh, I watched three of the Fast and the Furious movies. <laughs> I was too tired to even go out. I ordered food to the room. And look what's here. This is Paul Walker's Toyota Supra. It's just so amazing to see how far the tuning culture and the styling and everything has come on since then because now it looks so gaudy but back then this was the coolest thing ever i mean like everybody wanted their car to look like that everybody wanted a weird robo fist on the car i mean i'd still have it don't get me wrong but oh man it makes me feel old and here we are the future of the sema show this is where all of the evs are so let's take a look under the hood and see what exciting things are in there. Oh, uh, nothing, just a big battery. Now I know it's all gonna go to EV eventually and we're just gonna have to like it. But for now, it does make me sad, it does. I know the tech's gonna be cool and things are gonna be fast, but are they gonna have character? That's the thing. Are they gonna lose the, the, the visceral kind of nature of driving and changing gears and all of that kind of stuff? Or is it just gonna be like, driving super fast hover cars. So if you guys have watched the channel since the beginning, you may remember me driving a 100 mile per hour off-road buggy out in Utah. It's a Sierra car, the thing is absolutely wild. Well, not only do they have a new one, but look who's here. It's Cole, everybody. I'm back. Up, dude? Good to see you. <laughs> Good to be seen. So if you remember the video, I got to go out in a Hayabusa turbo powered one, right? Is that what uh, it was? Just the basic Hayabusa, oh, yeah. That was that not was even the basic? turbo. Yeah, that, okay. the RX-3 is what we got you out of Okay, so it was probably one of the most terrifying things I've ever done, but also the most fun thing. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I will put in a clip just to recap you on that because it was wild. Did you say there's a jump somewhere? Yeah. <laughs> Get in! That's so much fun! That's so much fun! <laughs> that was the Hayabusa one which I thought was cool, but apparently this one is even cooler and this is your new electric one, right? Yeah, so we converted, we're on all electric now and we've proven that it's outperforming the gas models like that RX-3 that you like so much. Yeah. Um, this crushes it. So Lucy really? Block just drove this at Pikes Peak yeah. and she beat the other RX3 competitors that had driven there multiple years in a row on her very first rookie year. Wow. And she's a gravel racer, she does rally. She's yeah. not an asphalt or tarmac racer. So it's a true testament to how good the car is. Uh, it's better in every way. The, the cost of operating it went down and the speeds went up. And very rarely do you ever right, right, get exactly. that, that exchange. So. It's been a really positive thing for us. We're having a lot of fun with it. And we just got the new base model car down to 39,000 bucks. So in the back, we added three battery packs and then we have a motor and drive unit. This sits in the exact spot where the motors uh, were at on the other vehicles. So all the weights in the same location. We had a very small uh, uptick in weight for it, but it has way more power, so it's right. a very, very good exchange for us. But we even use the same radiator that we had on the gas. So pump. we're your water cooling batteries here. Yes, a full charge is about two two hours uh, to get a full charge on the thing. Wow! Um, and then if you go to like a level three charging, that's only forty five minutes. Oh my for goodness! Full charge. So we, we I was just rolling my eyes a little bit at some of the EVs over yeah. there because. I feel like it's lost its passion. It's lost Dude. its visceral, like, you know what I mean? You're, and you're right. You're 100% right. And I, I was like, how do we not ruin this? Because I wasn't a believer in EV, like, this is going to change the world. This is going to be everything for me. Right. I was very intrigued by it. And I drive RC cars. Those are cool. Those are electric. Nobody's <laughs> right. complaining. And they're way better than the nitro cars. So I was very apprehensive about the whole thing. And it wasn't until I drove the car and realize like we didn't ruin it. I like burning gas, I like making noise, that's all rad, but if, if it means I have to work on the car more, that's not rad, that's right, not right. fun. I wanna be a better driver, not a better mechanic. And in doing so, it really made it a lot easier for us to go out and make laps and have fun and not have to work on the thing so much. Speaking of driving them, it's been three years and I haven't had an invite back. Is there <laughs> any chance, please, that I can come and drive this one? He's thinking about it. I'm thinking He's real really hard. thinking hard. Approved. 
I've got some cool stuff planned out in Utah, hopefully over the next few months, so stay tuned. Uh, that's where these guys are, so we'll go out and shred. Let me know in the comments below uh, what you think of these things, and uh, I'll throw all of their information out in the description. So if you want to go give Sierra Cars a follow, give Cole a follow, because he's an absolute shredder too, outside of the business stuff. So yeah, I'll put all that below. But dude, thank you so much. Absolutely. Great to see you. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we'll be in one of these very soon. Just like that, SEMA 2023 is done. I feel like I got most of the show done. I reckon I probably did about 85%, which is really good. Last year, I probably did about 20. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Lots of really fun stuff coming up for the truck. Very excited to follow up on some of the conversations that I've had while I've been here. And I'm excited to share with you guys what we have planned. So if you've enjoyed this episode, please don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, do all the things. But most importantly, remember, don't do anything I wouldn't do. What he's See ya. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> See you guys.